the Islamic, Islamic Center of, of Tennessee, Tennessee present. Like we said, there's about five different ways that I know that that prayer is offered. Remember, we only gave one scenario of the salah. And that scenario is that if the enemy is right in front of you, right where the qibla is. And if it happens that they're on a different angle, then it is just prayed that half of the Muslims are on watch and they pray one rak'ah with the imam. After they pray that one rak'ah, the imam remains standing in prayer and those that are praying with him, they go stand watch and the others come. They haven't made salam yet. They go stand watch and the others come. Then they do one rak'ah, go back and stand watch. These come and finish with the imam while the imam is sitting in tashahud. Then he says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And the others come back and finish their one rak'ah on their own. There's a lot of different ways. And like we said, but because of that time, you guys are just going to have to come and see us on a regular basis if you want the answer. That's right. You can't get it all in one day. Okay, let's go to the next uh, section. There's still some other prayers that we didn't take. But inshallah, we'll find another time to do that. The next type, or the next category is common mistakes in the salah. And I want to tell you the one that is most harmful to you. And those are the ones that might invalidate your salah. Take for example, and we brought this up yesterday, is when you pray and you have clothing that doesn't cover you properly. Especially, it seems like this happens a lot with the children, is that when you pray, your shirt is too short that it starts to ride up halfway up your back. And your pants goes down until you see things that nobody should see. Right? This will invalidate your salah if you are doing it knowingly. If you feel a cool breeze and you're thinking that it's just a cool day but really you're not covered and you continue, if it happens on accident, your salah is still valid. You cover quickly though. But if you just, you don't care, this is nullifying one of the conditions of the salah. Not a pillar, a condition. Which means that it needs to be done before the prayer. Right? That's something that you want to take care of. And similarly with our sisters, it's known that she has two areas that she has to have open when she prays. That is her hands and her face. And without getting into should her feet be covered or not, the better thing to do is to wear a skirt long enough to cover your feet, at least the top part, right? But you have to have loose clothing on that doesn't sh show the form of your body. It should be loose. A second part is, or another part is, moving too quickly. Do you guys remember just a second ago, we took uh, pillars of salah, right? And we said that moving too fast nullifies tranquility in salah. So if you move in like a race car, or you think you're racing next to the per uh, with a person next to you so you can finish fast, and that's especially for the kids, right? Especially for the ones that want to hurry up and go to break. They think Muallim's class is too long. And they know he only gives them five minutes. And then they try to hurry up and finish. Right, Muhammad? Oh, you wouldn't know anything about that, huh? <laughs> so, you want to maintain that tranquility and that serenity in your prayer. Even walking to the salah, and you know Imam Ahmed is reading, and he's gotten to the last ayah on whatever surah he is, and you heard him from the wudu area. You said, we got to catch that rak'ah. So you go sprinting. You're going to catch that rak'ah because you're so keen on it, right? No. You have to walk slowly. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, إِذَا أُقِيمَتِ الصَّلَاةِ فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالسَّكِينَةِ وَالْوَقَارِ He said, if the call for prayer has been made, then maintain your serenity and your tranquility. Whatever you arrive to, Pray with them. And whatever you miss, make it up. Don't run. If you miss it, you miss it. But at least you're not breathing heavily 
while you're praying, you're in ruku' and you're, Subhan Rabbil Azim, Subhan Rabbil Azim. So, are you trying to catch up? It's not right. Your salah is supposed to be peaceful. That's far from peaceful. It's supposed to be uh, calm, and that's far from calm. All right? So, that's something we need to look into. When you make ruku', you should try to make sure that every joint goes back to its original place. Because as Imam Ahmed mentioned before, that a person should not peck at his salah. Okay? He shouldn't peck at his salah like a crow or like a rooster. Both were narrated in a hadith. That let not any of you make his sujood like the pecking of a rooster. And he continued and he said, And do not squat like the squatting of a dog. And do not look left and right like that of a fox. So every time somebody walks in, you look right, you look left, you look up, you look down, you look everywhere but except where you're supposed to look. So these are things that you should refrain from doing. Not to mention that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that that is ikhtilasun yakhtalisuhu shaytan. That it's a theft that shaytan steals from a person's prayer. You have a set number of reward every time you're looking away and you're looking here without a reason. Without a reason, it's taking away or shaitan is stealing reward from your salah. You guys understand that? Remember the point of this seminar is not only to perfect your own salah, but it's to educate people as well because these are a lot of things that people are not aware of. Okay? Remember we said also that you don't want people to cross in front of your salah. So, what you try to do is to pray in front of some kind of wall or a pillar, if you can do so, even if you pray behind a person. Just so that nobody crosses in between you and Allah. You're having a conversation with your God, you're, having, uh, you're, you're performing your salah to Him, you're asking Him for mercy, so it is not right to have somebody walk in between you. In a hadith narrated by Abu Hurairah, he says that if the person that would cross in front of the one praying to Allah was to know how vile that is it is better for him to wait for 40 hadith never mentioned what 40 what days years seconds it just said for 40 and he was asked 40 what he said I don't know that's all I remember that's all we heard was 40 so regardless of what it is do you think you can wait for 40 minutes while somebody is praying no we act like we got to go to the bathroom whenever we are, somebody's there praying, and you look around and there's a line of people, especially on Jum'ah, somebody's praying, there's a line of people and they're waiting to cross in front of this person, and some brave soul decides, you know what, you guys are all scared, let me go ahead and walk in front of them. Wait 40. Wait 40 seconds, wait 40 minutes, wait 40 days, just whatever it is, just wait. Okay, it's better for you. Let's go on to the next section so that that way we'll take a little bit of each. Even though there's still much more common mistakes we can take. There's a lot. The last part we said is making up a missing prayer. Right? This happens to the best of us. We try our best to pray on time but then a salah comes and we might miss it. Let's talk about accidentally missing a salah and intentionally missing a salah. Accidentally missing a salah, you're still okay. What's an accidental reason? You accidentally slept through a salah. The key word being accidentally. Okay? Going to sleep at 5 o'clock in the morning and then saying that I'm going to wake up in 30 minutes or an hour and you don't. You didn't accidentally sleep through it. You didn't prepare for it. You have to prepare for these things. You know you have work in the morning, you sleep early so you can get up to work. You have prayer, especially for the man, since you hit the age of puberty. It's now officially obligatory on you, and you can never stop praying until you die. You don't get a break, never. You gotta pray forever, until you die. With the ladies, during a monthly cycle, she don't have to pray for seven days, where she can sleep through. She can even sleep and then push her husband out of the bed. Go pray. Get out of here. Go. You know what you're supposed to do? Put the blanket. Yeah. 
This is really how you do ta'awun al birr wa taqwa. You guys want to help each other in good? Even if you if, even if you are not praying, you can still help your loved ones by waking them up for salah. It's just as important. Because it keeps the house and it keeps the uh, Muslim environment intact. Just because that person's feeling lazy, it's not an excuse for both of you to miss it, right? Somebody's got to actually have a little bit extra faith on that day or that morning and then say, you go and do it. Or you start and I'll come. Or if she has an excuse, then you go and pray. Even if you're sick, and let's say you're sick and you can't even make wudu because it'll make you even more sick, you still don't have an excuse. You go make tayammum. You guys know what tayammum is? If you're extremely sick and you can't move, you're like, I can't make it to a wudu area, you, can, you still make tayammum. You go and you, one, wash your hands, or wipe your hands, wipe your face, and then you pray. If you're too sick to pray sta standing, pray sitting. If you're too sick to pray sitting, pray on your side. For a man, you have one excuse, dead. That's it. You died, something happened to you. No more prayer. Okay. That's for the accidental one. Another accidental is that you forget. Right? You forgot. You sincerely forgot. You didn't know what was happening. You were so busy. You were having too much fun. Or you were making too much money. Whatever the case was, you were happy. Or some, you were maybe extremely sad. Actually, you know what's funny? When you're really sad, you always remember Allah. Uh, so, if you forgot, then you, the time for prayer is when you remember it. Right when you remember it. Now let's go to unintentional. Or I'm sorry, you intentionally missed your prayer. You seen it was uh, 2.30, and this is Asr time, and then guess what happened? You said, no, we still have time. Of the movie. 3.30. So you decide, I'm going to still stay. I'm going to still watch. And guess what happens? It's 4.30 now. Right? Now, I don't want to bring up many opinions. I don't want to say there's difference of opinion, because I want you to go away with... Uh, the best opinion that is going to be beneficial for you. Okay? And I believe that the best one for you is if you intentionally, and remember there's another saying to this, but if you intentionally miss a salah and you don't make it up, or you intentionally miss a salah, the majority of scholars say you can make it up. But I believe the most sound one is that if you intentionally missed it, you don't get the privilege to make it up. You don't get the privilege to make it up if you intentionally make up or miss the salah. The reason being is because there's a lot of evidences for both sides, right? But the reason being, I believe, is because that if there's a specific time to do a certain action and you don't do it within that time, you don't have, enough, you don't have a valid excuse, you can't make it up. Similar to Hajj, Hajj has a certain time, right? Hajj has a certain time that you're supposed to pray it in, or you're supposed to make it in. If you said, I'm going to intentionally leave Hajj time, correct? And then after the Hajj time comes, you say, I want to make Hajj now, in this, in January, and it's supposed to have come in November, for example. No, you can't do that. Or, if you wanted to pray Fajr during Maghrib time, for no valid reason, you just said, I'm going to pray Fajr because I'm going to sleep all night. And I'm only wake up at Lord, so I'm just going to pray Fajr now. What is that? I'm going to chew Qat. See, but only Yemenis understand that reference. And Somalis. Okay? Don't look at you. But, uh, but regardless, be very cautious on your Salah. Unless you have an excuse, you can, uh, you can pray it in a different, outside of its time. But be very cautious that it doesn't leave its time without you having a valid excuse. If it does happen, make tawbah to Allah. And if you believe the other saying is more correct, still offer your salah, right? But make tawbah and seek repentance because you've done a great major sin by leaving it out without, outside of its time. All right? And lastly, how... Do you make up a salah that you accidentally forgot? And this will be the last thing we take. Because it's probably Maghrib time already. You missed Asr. 
and I know this is going to be a question that's always asked. You, you missed out, you forgot. It's 4.30, right? Maghrib time comes in. Which one do you pray first? If you're at home, you pray Asr. Because you have to maintain the order. But let's say you, had, you came to the masjid and then you said, they're praying Maghrib now, I haven't prayed Asr. Right? Here, you pray whatever the congregation is praying. You pray whatever the congregation is praying, and then you pray your Asr prayer. So basically, if there's still time for the prayer, pray the one that came first. Dhuhr time. You missed Dhuhr, right? And Asr time is also close to Maghrib now. Which one do you pray? Huh? What about if Dhuhr time is already gone? Because Maghrib is already almost coming in, correct? Which means you miss Asr also. But now Asr is right there. There's still a little bit of time to pray Asr. So pray your Asr before the time comes in. Then if you're in congregation, you pray your Maghrib. Then you make up your Dhuhr. That's if the timing is squeezed. But normally you maintain the order unless the timing is squeezed. Like meaning it's, there's not enough time. And like we said before, we tried to keep everything short and minimized because of the time. Or actually there's so much and so many different scenarios that we can talk about. Now, huh? Combination? This usually happens with maybe like a traveler. Hmm? Like with a traveler, like he, they're praying Aisha and he's praying Maghrib, for example, correct? He's praying Maghrib and he stays seated until uh, they get to the fourth rak'ah, right? Then he makes salam with them on the fourth rak'ah, but it's really his third. That's usually with a traveler. But in regards to uh, making up a salah, he should pray whatever they're praying. And like there's a lot of different sayings, but this is what I believe is the most accurate is pray whatever they're praying and then make up the salah afterwards what about uh, especially this time when you're trying to times there is no gap between you have for instance you have a apartment somewhere or shopping around you know you pray as a right away which mother you don't have no space to pray, to pray yeah so what about if you avoid that time and go back home and pray like let's say you want to pray Asr. I mean you've, you've prayed Asr but you have an appointment at 4 o'clock. Right? You have an appointment at 4 o'clock and Maghrib is 4.20. By the time you finish your appointment, it's 5.30. Which means that there's 10 minutes before Isha. Okay? If you cannot pray, um, I'm pretty sure that you can find, if you're not comfortable praying in front of anybody, you can still find a nice area that you can pray in. Because there's always a place you can pray. You, you, can, you can pray next to a tree. You can pray in a parking lot. You can pray anywhere. You just got to really push yourself to do it. It's a hard thing to do. But once you really want to do it, you'll find a way to pray it. Yeah. Um, you'd even be surprised that this happened to me in the emergency room. I took my wife uh, once to the emergency room. Um, and what happened was, we were waiting for the doctor to come in, right? And when you go to the emergency room, especially this Vanderbilt one, it's probably the worst thing you can ever do. Because they'll keep you in there for hours. Yeah, they'll keep you in there for a long time. So as I'm waiting in the emergency room, I went straight to the clerk lady, and I said to her, um, I need to offer my prayer. So if the doctor comes while I'm praying, I'll be in the room will be in the room but I'm gonna offer my salah and sure enough I'm praying my salah and the doctor comes in sees I'm doing some strange motions and leaves then comes back again and uh, it was okay it wasn't a problem you, you you know actually they respect you more if you do that so it's very possible just be upfront with somebody that you're gonna offer your salah you're gonna be okay I remember even again this happened to me on the airplane and I didn't want the guy to freak out next to me said, look, I need to pray. Do you need to go to the restroom or anything? Because I was on the aisle seat. I said, I'm going to pray right here in my seat. 
and you're going to see me moving up and down. I'm not reaching for a pillow underneath my shorts. I don't have, any, I don't have anything in my shoes. I'm just going to be moving in this motion to praise. And I, I made, you know, I, I told him, this is what I'm going to do. He said, actually, you know what? He was Christian. He goes, I'm going to pray with you. And he did this, and he started praying. <laughs> well, that's a true story. That's, that's what he did. He went like this, and he started praying. And I was praying next to him like this. So it's... In this case, yeah, it's not going to matter. And we'll take that with the traveler uh, prayer tomorrow, inshallah. So you, you just got to really become comfortable with what you're doing and you'll find a way for it, inshallah. Whoever fears Allah, uh, He will make a way out for him. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.